Uh, greetings, my dear viewer. You are most highly welcome. And we appreciate your uh, watching and your being with us every time. And we encourage you uh, to always uh, uh, tap all the series that we shall have uh, weekly. And in case you need the lesson, uh, the ad copy can be got from any SDA church, so you can contact any church and get the ad copy. But if you're convenient uh, with the soft copy, the link is really described down in that video you're watching. You can tap on that link and download the soft copy for yourself. And uh, before I actually continue any further, I would like to introduce myself and also introduce the colleagues that I am with in today's panel. My name is Okelo Moses and I will do the introductory part of the lesson and then part Sunday and uh, let me allow my dear colleagues and panelists to also introduce themselves. Thank you so much Brother Moses. Kiza Samuel Akiki, and my name will be covering part Monday and Tuesday. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Moses. Uh, my name is Jerome Smenta. I'll be taking on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for uh, the brief introduction. And as they have introduced themselves, uh, they will also take us through uh, the subsequent parts. Uh, of this lesson. Um, my dear viewer, as I dive into the lesson, uh, let us uh, humble ourselves and pray before we go into the lesson. Almighty Father in heaven, we invite you to come and be with us as we learn from this lesson. Let it be to convert the lives that have gone astray such that at the end of it all, when you shall come back, it shall be found rightful to be in your kingdom. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, uh, in this series we are in Lesson 5, uh, which is entitled Resurrections Before the Cross. And in the brief introduction, we shall see some resurrections that we actually may have read about in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament during the time of Jesus Christ. And what are the lessons that we are going to draw from these resurrections? Uh, you might have read them before, but then you might have not thought of anything uh, that you could possibly see or possibly learn from the resurrections in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. But in today's lesson, my dear viewer, uh, you shall learn much, much about uh, these resurrections. And we are going to read from our memory text. Our memory text is taken from the book of John, chapter 11, uh, verse 25 and 26, which says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die forever. Do you believe this? This was the question uh, to the woman that Jesus was talking to. Jesus, in this verse, actually gives the assurance that if you, if me, if anyone believes in him, he shall never die. Even if he dies, the Bible says that that person will live again. And whenever we live, we live forevermore. The life that Jesus holds for us is a life that is everlasting. It is not a life that we are worried of losing again. I know you and me, anybody there, is ever worried when and how he shall die. And after death, what hope do we have? In this lesson, we shall cover all that. Now, in the introduction of the lesson, we are given 
a few examples of some resurrection that really occurred before the death of Jesus at the cross. Uh, and in these examples, as we shall go through them in the subsequent parts of the lesson, uh, I will just briefly introduce it. Uh, in Jude 9, and then Luke 9, 28 and 36, we see the resurrection of Moses. Moses was the great leader that God really chose to pick his children from the land of Egypt to uh, the land of Canaan. And in the Bible, he was uh, also resurrected. And his resurrection took place uh, before the death of Jesus. And the son of the widow of Zarephath also, in 1 Kings uh, chapter 17, uh, verse 8 to 24, we also see the resurrection of the son of the widow of Zarephath. And then, Zaira's daughter uh, also was resurrected. When we look at this, is found in the story uh, recorded in Luke 8, 40 up to 56. And then, uh, lastly, but not uh, the whole narratives in the Bible, we also have Lazarus. These are the few examples that have been quoted in this lesson. Then, what, why, why are we studying uh, the resurrection of these people? Uh, these people actually resurrected. As we see, none of those accounts in the Bible, nor any other narratives in the Bible accounts, ever tells us that these people, after their resurrection, uh, gave us any account or any experience that they had in the supposed afterlife. I know there are many preachings out there that when we die, there is somewhere we go, there is something after life, that there is that conscious part of us that is still living somewhere. But then, the Bible does not give us any account on their experience. Because these people, except Moses, all of them resurrected, still to live as mortals. They lived with men, and still after that they died. But during the period after their resurrection, they never narrated any story of their experience in afterlife during their death, during the period that they were dead. They gave nothing like, I was in hell, or I was in paradise, or I was in uh, something like that. And allow me, I actually cross over to Pat Sunday. Pat Sunday, which is uh, telling us the resurrection of Moses. We are going to see how Moses was resurrected. First of all, uh, we need to know how he died and how he was buried. When we read from the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, and the verse is 5, to seven, it says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley, in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Pearl. But no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed, and is vigor unbated. Uh, this tells us clearly that Moses died, and the Bible records that he, he died in the land of Moab. And Moses was one special person that was buried by God himself. No mortal knew, and up to today, the Bible says, no one knows where his grave is. But then, uh, one thing that excites me uh, is what I find in the book of Jude, uh, Jude 9. You know Jude does not have a chapter. And when we read from the book of Jude 9, we realize that Moses was resurrected. But during the resurrection of Moses, uh, the archangel, Jesus himself, contended and, this, and there was a dispute between him and Satan. For the body of Moses. And the Bible says 
The dispute was about the body of Moses, not the spirit or the soul of Moses. I would like us to take note on this. So let's read uh, from Jude 9. Jude 9 says, But when the, arch the archangel Michael contended with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. So this was the dispute uh, between the devil and uh, the archangel, Jesus himself. And to, to, to give more confirmation, because there are people who think and say that Moses died, his spirit was seen taken to heaven according to uh, the concept of the Greek uh, theologian. He said, the, the soul of Moses was seen taken to heaven and his body was buried down. And this concept is not biblical. But the biblical concept of what we know about the death of Moses, as the Bible tells us that uh, Jesus contended and they, they were disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, not the spirit, or the soul of Moses. And then, in Luke 9, uh, when we begin from verse 28 to 36, we would see the story of Jesus going with some of his disciples to the mountain. And on that mountain, when he ascended to the mountain and left them at the bottom of the mount, they saw him with two men. And this man, let's read from the book of Luke. I'm going to read from the book of Luke. 9. Uh, let's just read verse 30 and 31. Verse 30 says, And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. They saw Moses and who? And Elijah. Uh, we remember very well uh, the Bible records in First Kings that Elijah was taken to heaven when he never tested what? death. And he and Moses was seen speaking to Jesus. Uh, there was nothing like they saw the Spirit. Remember uh, Peter, James, and John who went with Jesus were mortals. And in our mortal nature, we cannot see the Spirit. Now, there are some lessons that I would like us to take uh, from this. We should cling to Jesus for he is the only one that can serve us from, save us from certain greed for our soul. Like he saved Moses' body and saved Moses' soul, he can be the only one to save you and save me. Uh, that has been our introductory part. And part Sunday, I would like to invite the next panelist to take on through part Monday and Tuesday as we carry on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Moses, uh, for leading us through the previous part. Uh, dear viewer, thank you still for continuing to follow this episode of uh, this week's study. Um, allow me that we now go direct to the part Monday, which has the title, Two Old Testament Cases. In this part, we are presented to cases, all of them from the Old Testament. One is from 1 Kings 17, 8, 24, and the other is from 2 Kings 4, 18, 37. Let us see what are some of the similarities and differences in these passages. Well, uh, allow that we go and read uh, 1 Kings 1, 17, 
Uh, we shall read some passages from First Kings. As we go to read this passage, it's about Elijah and the widow of Zarephath and the son of this widow. And then let us see what really happened. We want to look at the very focus of this lesson. What exactly happened between these two and what uh, lesson do we pick out for us in these two cases? I uh, shall read starting from verse 17 of First Kings 17. 17 verse 17 onwards. Now, after, Moses, after Elijah had lived with his people, remember she came when he was so hungry and he comes here and he wants to He's hungry, he's just from a calamity which has happened in the land of Israel and he's running away from Jezebel, you know, and the calamity and prophets proclaim the drought and uh, here Moses, uh, Elijah comes in and uh, the Lord sends him to Zarephath when the drought, the, 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 the stream by which he was taking water from and uh, he drains straight up, right? He drained up and now the Lord sends him to Zarephath, go find a widow, he comes find a widow who is fetching some firewood to go and uh, prepare the last meal, I would call it, a handful of flour and oil, that's what he was left with. And when she tells me, uh, Elijah her problems and says, I only have a handful to eat and then die, Elijah says, please cook, go prepare for me first and then you do for your son later. And this widow, I mean, she, she, she knows that situation. He ha she hackens. And in that process, her son dies later when that had happened. Her son dies and... Um, here she comes, and after these things now, connecting to verse 17. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became, um, became sick. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath in him, and simply he died. So she said to Elijah, this is the widow, What have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? Hmm? And he said unto her, Give me your son. So he took the son out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on a bed, on his own bed. And then he cried out to the Lord and said, This is uh, Elijah. Oh, Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? And he stretched himself on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and sighed, Oh Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. And then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, just as he heard him in some, uh, when he cried out, when he was called for fire from heaven, the, Lord, the same Lord heard him, and the soul of the child came back to him. You know the stories when you read in the Bible and you feel, wow, I wish I was there to see physically. But by faith you can see what happened. And he revived. And Elijah took an imaginary widow uh, brings the child and uh, Elijah takes him to his room. I believe the widow they must have remained there praying. You know, and she didn't know what would come out. And, and then guess what? And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room and to the house and gave him to his mother. Can you imagine the mother gave Elijah a dead child and Elijah brings back a child who is alive. What a joy, what a turning of events, what a turning of the mood, you know. You hear the words of the widow and Elijah said to the widow, see your son lives. And then the woman said unto Elijah, like, now by this I know you are a man of God and the word of the Lord is in your mouth is the truth. Wow, I think these are words of total happiness. She must have been filled with that happiness that her son had been raised to life, who was once dead. Then the next passage was from First Second Kings. That's the passage number one. That's account number one, case number one. The next one is from Second Kings four eighteen to thirty seven, uh, and uh, here it is also concerning the other successor of Elijah, that's Elisha, and here he also being the man of God. As he was doing his work, after actually I had performed some miracle in the previous passage uh, of uh, giving the, a woman who had debts and he made her to pay her debts through a miracle, miraculous providence of oil. Now, he, he, a, a woman who was a prominent woman in that area, he organizes Elisha and uh, 
he recognizes him as the man of God and he sees that this man is always coming here and moving around but he doesn't have what save and they build the house for Elisha. And guess what? Elisha asked this woman, oh, what's, what can I ask the Lord for you for the favors you've done unto me? And the woman says, I'm, I'm married but have no child. Wow. And Elisha heard it and said, wow, God will give you a child. And guess what? The woman considered and got a child. Wow. And guess what? As the child had been growing, something happened at one day the child started to be feeling something. I feel pain in the head. Yeah. He took the child to the to their parents and the child actually died eventually. And yet the woman has to look for Elisha and know what's gonna happen. Why, why, why has my child died? So the woman looks for Elisha. And here in verse twenty eight it reads that so she said, Did I ask, did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? And then Elisha said to Gehaz, his servant, Get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. And if you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not ask him, but lay the staff on the face of the child and the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. I will not leave you. So he arose. In simple, she wanted to go alongside with Elisha. And so uh, she, uh, he, they all arose together, and woman first uh, followed her. And now uh, here we see when Elisha came into the house, there was the child, there was the child lying still dead, and he went in there for shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his uh, on his mouth and his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands. And he stretched out out of the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. Wow, something's gonna happen here. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. And the child sneezed how many times? Seven times. Wow. And the child opened his eyes, and he called Gehaz and said, Call this Shunammite woman. So she, he called her. And when she came into him, he said, Pick up your son. So he went in and fell at his feet and bowed to the ground and picked up her son and went out. We see all these accounts are concerning uh, two uh, ladies who were in a situation which they needed God's intervention. They all had lost their children and all of them God had mass on them through their, his prophets and the two children were resurrected. We see that uh, all of these women may not have had the same backgrounds, but all of them, in the kindness they showed to the God's prophets, God rewarded them. And they had faith that God would give life to their dead children. Wow. And guess what? All of them, their children were given back to them. And so, uh, it gives us that uh, lesson that, uh, where, where do we point especially where, when we are having trials, do we call upon God? These women looked unto God, looked unto the faith, their faith was in the God of these prophets, and God raised them to dead, to, from the dead to life. Amen? And so, these are the two Old Testament cases of the women receiving back their children. Also, the next case comes in the very next uh, day, which is the Tuesday, and we see the woman, the son of the widow of Nain. Now, the Bible tells us very well from the book of Acts 10, 30, that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were pressed by the devil. And so Jesus did many miracles, and uh, many uh, who uh, came were astonished of Jesus' miracles. Actually, I want to read from Steps to Christ, uh, page uh, 11 and 12. Uh, then we, uh, we see uh, the, the Word of God tells us that, the quotation uh, by God's servant, the tells us, there were whole villages where there was not a moon of sickness in any house. I like this passage. For he passed through them and healed all their sick. His work gave evidence of his divine anointing. Love, mercy, compassion were revealed in every act of his life. Wow. His heart went out in a tender sympathy to the children of men. He took man's nature that he might reach man's wants. Amen. Wow. The poorest 
Humblers were not afraid to approach him. Wow. And even little children were attracted to Jesus. So can you imagine Jesus' time, you know, when he was here? Physically, he had told that in the whole villages where Christ passed, there was no one who was sick. Can you imagine a world which Christ desires that no one be sick? That is the Jesus we believe in, that the Jesus that you need to take it for yourself today. Here we are given an account from the book of Luke 77, verse 11 to 17. And uh, we want to compare so with the previous passages which you read. This one happened in the village of Nain. Nain is in, the, it is in uh, Israel and it is uh, found in the northern part of Israel. Uh, that is, uh, we are told, around uh, close to 20 kilometers uh, south of uh, Nazareth. That's what you're given in look at the geography of that place. And so we see that during his time on this earth, Christ has he went about doing all these good things. When he came now to the village of Nain, here we see that he made he missed a procession. And guess what? People were carrying a dead child. And guess what? Even this child was not just a normal child, a common child, but was the only son of the widow. I mean, the woman had already lost his husband, and now she had also lost her only son. And guess what? Christ meets these people who were in a weeping mood, weeping, saying, oh, all she had was this child, and now the child is gone. What has she done? Christ comes and tells the woman, do not weep. And then Christ stands to the coffin. Wow. Open the coffin. Open the coffin. And Christ tells the child. Wow, I like the word that Christ said. And tells the child, Young man, I say unto you, Arise. Wow. Guess what? The death he did hear the word of Christ. And the son came to life. Wow. And Jesus presented him to his mother. What an interesting moment. Christ turned the mood of the whole that was of the whole procession that was happening. Christ changed the situation. The presence of Christ turned the whole situation of sorrow into joy. The presence of Christ doesn't leave things the same. The presence of Christ changes you also when you take Christ as your Savior and make him your friend. He will change you. He can never leave you the same. He'll turn your sorrows into joy. He'll raise you from grass to grass. So, he is the Christ whom we are appealing to you, dear uh, viewer. That is the Christ you and me need. That he may transform our lives. We see here in both the, the widows, uh, uh, we have looked about the widow of, uh, of Zarephath and the Shunammite woman. We see that all of them, they came for help. They all sought for help from uh, the two prophets of God, except they sought prayer help from God. But it comes to the oh, a widow of Nain, she did not ask for help. It's Christ who saw her in need and came to her rescue. That shows how God is so gracious that he grants us more than we ask. He cares about our needs. Actually, God gives us more than we ask always. And so, he who cares for the orphans, the widows, is also ready to care for you. Just as he turned the sort of full widow and gave her back her child, he is also able to give that which you desire in life once you invite him and let him be your guide in this life. We see that in all these cases, God raised people from death and he gave them life. And all this happened before Christ was nailed on the cross. My God bless you. As you think of all these miraculous things that God did, he can also do them in your life. My God bless you, dear viewer. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, my brother, Moses. And uh, thank you, Elder, for that submission. Yes, uh, resurrections before the cross. Uh, that's lesson number five which we are trying to discuss and as we contemplate and we see how resurrections before the cross were. You hear the word cross, of course, when someone hears the cross, uh, more so, they understand it as the death of Christ or when Jesus was crucified on the cross. 
And uh, by this, we all know that this was done. Uh, he did, died for our sins. But before that, that was just a light of uh, what the cross meant. And uh, we see that before Jesus was crucified, many, many miracles happened, and one of these was resurrecting the dead. And uh, he, he likes his word, sleep, uh, as you're going to see here. But sleep meaning death. Uh, Part Wednesday uh, has a title, uh, Jairus' Daughter. Yes, uh, before this, uh, they want to show us some of the uh, ethics or the groups of people who were are, who are resurrected by Christ. And we see that uh, the resurrection prior to Jesus' own death, and uh, they were not limited to any specific group. And uh, we see that Moses, uh, who was perhaps the greatest human leader uh, of God's people ever, uh, was one of people who were resurrected. And I want us to read in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Uh, I have a quote here in uh, Education, the book Education by N.G. White, uh, page 64. It says that such was the experience that Moses gained by his 40 years of training in the desert to impart such an experience Infinite wisdom counted not the period too long or the price too great. The results of the training of the lessons they are taught are bound up not only with the history of Israel, but with all which from that day to this has taught for the world's progress. Uh, we see um, more people here. Uh, for example, uh, like uh, the poor Phoenician widow uh, who was not an Israel. When you read in 1 Kings 17.9, you see that this poor Phoenician widow was not an Israel. Also, when you read in 2 Kings 4.8, we see that we had a Shunammite woman who was prominent in her community. So, uh, here we see that uh, Darius was a ruler of the synagogue, probably uh, in the Capernaum. When you read in Mark 5.22, we see that here, regardless of different backgrounds, were resurrected. So, what do I learn from this? That the resurrection did only happen in Israel, but they happened all over the world. Meaning, Jesus doesn't discriminate whether you're a sinner, not a sinner, whether you're from Uganda or America, whether you're from whatever part of the world, he can heal you. So, that is a great lesson to learn. And um, we're going to read in uh, Matthew, uh, in Mark 5:39. Mark 5.39 uh, The Bible says, And when he, was, when he was coming, he saith unto them, Why make this idol and weep? The, des the damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. As I told you before, that... Uh, Christ, him saying that someone is sleeping, he meant he's, he died. Or that person uh, is not alive. So, the child is not dead, but sleeping. In Mark 5, 39, we continue. We see that Jairus, uh, 12 year daughter, was lying deathly sick at home, meaning the, the, the daughter was sick, but nearing death. Uh, so he went to Jesus and begged him to come to his home and lay his healing hands on her. But before they could get there, someone already brought the sad news that your daughter is dead. And Mark, in Mark 5.35, which we've just read, told uh, Darius, why trouble the teacher any further? Because your daughter is dead. But you see the... the Continuing words. When you read in uh, Mark 5.36, it says that Jesus said unto her, uh, Do not fear, only believe. We face many challenges in life whereby fear comes first and we tremble and even we fail to take the next step. 
But here, Jesus told this father that, do not fear, just believe. Whether your daughter has died, whether your daughter hasn't died, whether you've got an accident or not, whether you've had your father is in the hospital, is on oxygen, do not fear, but believe. So, whatever you face challenges, let not fear take us, but rather we believe in Christ, and when you believe in Christ, you've also believed in the Father. So we see that, indeed, all the Father could do was totally in God's intervention. Arriving at the, ho the, the house, Jesus said to those who gathered there, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. He continued using the word sleep, uh, whereby many people could not understand. The person is there and saying he's sleeping. How? But he's not waking up. But here we see that in Mark 5.39, um, people, when he said that uh, the child is not dead, but sleeping, people mocked him. The Bible says that they regard him, meaning they laughed at him, but in the way of mocking him. How do you say this? The person is dead. He can't even speak. Even if you turn him upside down, he can't wake up. So how do you say that the, the person is sleeping? So, they knew that she was dead. But, they did not grasp the meaning of his words. So, the comforting uh, metaphor, uh, metaphor by which sleep stands for death seems that have been Christ's favorite way of referring to this experience. When you read in, in Matthew 9.44, uh, Matthew 9.24, uh, you can read there, Matthew 9.24, he said unto them, Give praise, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, meaning they mocked. So, uh, we see here that Jesus is saying sleep, he means the person is dead. So, we see that uh, death is sleep, but it is deep sleep from which one, only the great life giver can awake one. For he alone has the keys to the tomb, when you read in Revelation 1.18, John 3.16, saying uh, uh, that Jesus, I mean God, gave us his only son, and whoever believes in the son shall not perish, perish but have everlasting life. So uh, with that, we saw that after the resurrection of this girl, those who saw it were like it overcome with amaze, amazement. And that is in Mark 5.42. And we see that no wonder for now, death is final, absolute, and seemingly irreversible. To have seen something like this with your own eyes, Literally, you would have been amazed. Life-changing experience. So, do not fear, but believe. Uh, lastly, on Thursday, we have Lazarus. And uh, Lazarus, of course, this is a great example. And uh, when you read in the scripture, for example, John 11, 4. When you read in John 11, 4. The Bible says that when Jesus heard that he, that, he said, this is not, this is sickness. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And the Son of God might be glorified thereby. I read in Desire of Ages, whereby it says that it was for Lazarus that the greatest of, uh, it was for Lazarus that the greatest of Christ's miracles was performed. The Savior blessed all who sought his help. He loves all human family, but to some he is bound by peculiarly tender associations. His heart was knit by a strong bond of affection to the family at Bethany. For, uh, and for one of them, his most wonderful work was wrought. So it is that this res res resurrection was one of his greatest miracles that he, per he performed, as we're going to see here. Jesus uses his still word of sleep talking about death. He says that our, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going, to, I'm going there to wake him up in John 11.11. 11. So, 
when some thought he was talking about this real, real sleep, Jesus declared and stated and that he meant he's dead. We see that Peter, uh, who, those who are moving with him, uh, they asked him, but if he's just sick, then he, let, let's leave him, we shall go there tomorrow. But he told them that he's dead for them to be attached and they had to go see what had happened to him. So uh, they moved and we see that uh, Jesus told Martha that your brother will arise from the dead in John 11, 23. So she affirmed her belief in the final resurrection, but Jesus declared, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who, who lives and believes in me will never die forever. What do we learn from this? We see that even if you die now, the first death, when Jesus comes back, and you, you, did, you died as a believer, he will resurrect you. But still, you can still live as a believer and stay alive when Jesus comes back to take us and takes you to heaven. So uh, what lessons do I pick here? That when you fall into a challenge, when you, you find an obstacle, maybe someone is sick, maybe uh, you, you're losing on something, maybe you have a lot of challenges, do not fear, but just believe. And when you believe through Christ, you will be saved. And here we see that we should also not be overtaken by things we know. Because many people thought that when someone has died, has died. But here we see that Jesus resurrecting Lazarus and the Jairus daughter, we see that Christ as him, he has that power that is not in us. So it is only through him that he can resurrect someone who has already died into back to living. Uh, thank you. Next week, we are going to have lesson six. And the title will be, He Died for Us. We shall learn who, who died for us. Why did he die? Was he supposed to die anyway? But he died. Uh, I will be glad to see you again uh, or to join us in, the, in this uh, series of the lesson. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and then hit the notification button such that whenever we upload this video, you will be notified and don't miss any of our uploadings. Thank you. Uh, to finalize, I would like to uh, request uh, my elder, Elders uh, Samuel, to give us the closing prayer. Let us pray for the name of Jesus Christ. We will thank you for the special moment you've given us to learn about your word, learn about the resurrection before the cross, O oh Lord. You have seen, you have proved it, you proved it even before Christ died on the cross, that you want to see us alive, that you are planning to see us alive. May you help me, O oh Lord. May you help that viewer. That we may have that saving relationship with Christ, that when Christ comes, even though we may be dead, he may still raise us, that we may live with him eternally. Help us, Father, say every barrier that stands in our relationship with Christ, that we must surrender all our life to Jesus, that we may trust Jesus and feel the sweetness of, sweetness of trusting in Jesus. Help that viewer. Help them in any challenge the viewer is facing. Help and provide all their needs as you provide the needs of the widows and raise their children. Reach out to the need of that viewer. May your blessing and favor be upon us, Lord, till we meet again in the next session. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.